I'm from North Korea. And today I want to talk about the long and difficult journey from North Korea to freedom. Uh, I defected South Korea to I defected to South Korea for freedom of speech and movement. And I had long to put my feet in this soil, even in my dreams. And after a long time in China, I finally, in 2008, I finally arrived in Incheon Airport of, uh, in South Korea. <laughs> oh, sorry, <laughs> my name is Mary. <laughs> I was declared at airport, and then I asylum to thinking. I asylum to thinking I'm from North Korea, and they so quickly assured to another room. And later, the two men suddenly appeared to seem to be senior officers, and then they closely checked my pa Chinese passport, and they keep asking me if I was actually Chinese. I res resisted the pressure and I said to call the, I asked for them to call National Intelligence Service. Four months later, after all I had been through South Korea's orientation in South Korea, I entered my new house. I found nothing, no TV set, no furniture, even not a spoon. I feel too empty. Uh, the feelings of utter loneliness was the lowest point in my life. When I, when I was sick, when I want called on my mother or my friend and my family, there was no they were, not my family, they were, they were so far away. So, settling down in South Korea, that turned out to be far more, far more than to be a lot more challenging than I had expected. I realized, there, I realized there, there was a wide gap between North and South Korea, uh, ranging from educational background to cultural and linguistic differences. We are racially uh, ho homo homogeneous people on the outside, but I feel inside we have very become very different uh, as a result of the 63 years of the division. Uh, the, among these difficulties I encountered the economy problems were the worst. I found that financial hardship could, could limit my ability to realize my dream. To no matter how desperate and honest I am. In the past, I was spoke in front of many people, maybe more than famous people, but today I don't know why I'm so... <laughs> because I didn't have enough sleep last night. <laughs> because I had the long midterm Friday. And then I started from last night to prepare this until this morning, so... <laughs> my condition is really bad, sorry for this. So after that, I don't know. <laughs> so I'm really grateful for all the thanks that South Korean government helps uh, through uh, various welfare programs to North Korean defectors. But it feel far short of what was needed since North Korean defectors, uh, since from need to start, have to scratch. So. And 
the prejudice against North Koreans and the ISIS tales were other obstacles that were hard to cope with. There were times <coughs> I f when I felt alienated, think that, think that I, I would eventually <coughs> die as a stranger in a country where, share, where people share the same ancestry. Even later, even I went through my identity crisis. Uh, who am I? Am I South Korean and North Korean or Chinese? Uh, there's no country I could, do, I could proudly call my own. So sometimes I thought it was so much easier to return to China. After a year of confusion and disorder, finally, I arrived, I managed to my life, find meaning my life in Korea. Then one day I heard that my family in North Korea had been targeted from the authorities and were to be a force, forcibly moved to a remote area. So I agonized over the issue for a while and I decided to go back for them. So I met them at a Chinese border in China and I managed to then help escaped North Korea. Later, we traveled to the border of Laos and I met a broker who I paid money to take them to the South Korean embassy in Vientiane, the capital of the country. Uh, later, but on my way to the airport to return to South Korea, I got one phone call from a broker that my family had been caught as they crossed the border. When I heard this, I felt shattered. I encountered, I entered the Laos without any knowledge and I didn't, about the country, and I didn't speak any language at that time. And even I don't know, I have no clue where my family was. So again, I felt powerless and frustrated. Facing the reality, there was no one to hear me. After paying numerous fines and nearly 50 days of going back to the, um, the immigration office and the police station, and that later I was finally able to my family, I can meet them, my family, and at the end of eventually we can got to the South Korean embassy together. Here in South Korea, I'm continuing to learn English for, uh, in order to boost my prospects. When North Korean defectors try to get us up here to uh, stabilize to lives, their lives, but their lack of English in, is a handicap in here. It was the same story when I, while I was living in China. It was, took a lot of time to learn Chinese and a lot of enthusiasm for me. But I never thought I came to this country and I have this much stress due to language in this South Korea. So I just fortunately I found one great organization called PS Corps which helps North Korean defectors adapt to uh, South Korean society and offers a program to learning English from native speakers. In 2011, my all heart were paid off. I was, when I was at Mary, the Chinese language department of Hanguk University of Foreign Studies, which is uh, <laughs> where Obama came gave speech during 2012 nuclear summit. I choose my major as Chinese, the, the hoping, I hoping I would be able to uh, in, take part in ever increasingly trade with China. So I'm 
I'm currently work at the Ministry of Unification as a student journalist uh, alongside the South Korean students and write article about the relations between North and South Korea as well as possibility of the unification. And after also I'm a young leader at the Pacific Forum CSIS. Usually the North Korean scholar or politicians were involved to their conference, but I was the first first North Korean defectors was involved. So the last time I was in Hawaii, the conference, and then the few days ago in a Singapore, there was a second conference I was involved. And right after that, two, right after 2011, uh, the 2012 nuclear summit, security summit, uh, the comp summit. I had dinner with uh, the UK Prime Minister Nick Clegg, and I asked for them about him, uh, about the UK's rule in promoting peace, Korean Peninsula, and improving human rights in North Korea. And he offered, offered really sincere answers. And it seems he's really mm, honest about helping North Korean defectors, which made me optimistic about the future. <laughs> um, this is also this day I, I'm on a TV show uh, where I'm talking about the North Korean issues and the cultural difference between these, these two countries. So occasionally, I'm so, I'm so surprised I have changed so much and so quickly. So I just, I know that this is, didn't come really easily and I feel this is, there is far more than I, far, much more far to be done to realize my dream. Uh, that makes me sometimes scared and depressed but in times, but I believe, I do believe there's a, when there's a dream, there's a future. Uh. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Later. In reality, Koreans are long cherished desire, desires of a reunification seems more distant due to uh, the hostilities and the, the growing economic economic gaps. So I do my best to prepare for the day the two Koreas become one. And and I hope with work with hard work I can be I can serve as an example for North Koreans who come to this land to follow their dreams. <laughs> Thank you so much.